It's gonna get braced and some other stuff like that. So if it looks a little weak sauce, you might be right. I don't know. But I think once it's uh once it's all tied into the frame and the bed mounts and triangulated really good, I think it's gonna be fine. up everybody i know it's been a while since uh i did the last video on this thing i've been driving the truck for a couple of months you've seen it at shows you've seen it out at cruise meets and i started getting a lot of comments about when are you gonna get you know finished did i miss something what happened to the rear end what happened to this how'd you do the gas tank how'd you do when i say a lot of comments it's been like nine or ten and some instagram stuff maybe 20 total but uh there hasn't been a lot of traction here on youtube and it takes a lot of effort for me to do these videos because I'm not a videographer. I'm as much a videographer as I am a truck builder. So yeah, I just kind of fell off because if you notice the last video I think we did on this had like 250 views or something. I didn't think a lot of people were really getting information out of it. You were probably watching all the pros like I do. So for the few of you that were kind enough to reach out and ask some questions on where it's at, how I did it and what's going on, here's a video for you. And uh, I appreciate you guys a lot, especially those ones that went and like grabbed a t-shirt because I was not expecting that. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Get one down below in the links in the description. And then uh, watch the video so you can see how we got here. That's proof that I've been driving it everywhere and nothing's broke and everything's worked out. So maybe this will help you. Oh. Okay, so let's start this day off, day three, if it matters. I don't know how we're editing this video. And this is where we're at. Today's goals. We're going to get these bars out and get those tacked. Now that I know that's the length and everything's going to be fine. I've got just over an inch and a half of thread coming all the way down the bar and the bung. So hopefully that's enough. That's safe to run like that. So I'll get those tacked up. Uh, pull the wheels off. Get these tacked in a little bit better. Make sure that's good to go. Maybe just weld them complete. And we'll go ahead and uh, cut the uh, cut the meat out. Get that all out the way. And you can finally see this thing on the ground. So we can start working on the upper bars, the bracing, and, well, I guess the bags at that point. But let's, uh, let's start with getting these bars off and getting those things tacked up. Okay, good, bad, and different. I don't know. But... It's on the ground and um, yeah now we can set the pinion angle figure out what we're gonna do with the top bars get all this metal out the way go from there let's get these gloves and glasses off look crooked huh all right so for me I find using the cutoff wheel gives me a straighter cut it's just the way I grew up that's the only tool I owned so we made it work and uh, I got pretty good at it. Obviously, these will need some trimming, but not bad, as you can see. Not bad. I feel like I just have more control with a cutting wheel and a sawzall blade, you know, tops and bottoms, as you saw, than I do like a tool like a plasma cutter that I'm very inexperienced at. So much so that, you know, I used it that one time on the front and I, I'm still considering returning it because I haven't used it again. Okay, we're back on the ground. That's all the personality I have. It's pretty boring. I understand why there is under a million subscribers in this channel. Um, yeah, again, way more match than I'll probably ever need. Even going up to 20s, I don't think I'm gonna need that much because trust me when I say she's on the cross number. As you can see with these Toyotas, Let's get you a good look. It's not even gonna lay on the ground because the cross mount is on the ground. Yeah, there's the cat. Uh, there's the cat, there's the, there's the pipe. There's the front cross member. And there's your pinch, your frame, your cat. And if you follow it underneath, there's a transmission cross member up there firmly sitting on the ground so I guess we're building that one next and probably moving this exhaust good news is there's a lot of room to go up with that cat so not a big deal the exhaust will be an easy fix 
But if we want to go lower, we got to build a transmission cross member. At least that's pretty simple. And get rid of this e-brake. And get rid of that brake. Like crap situation. Oh man, don't look at the welds. Uh, I'm not sure what my thought process well was on that whole is that going to be enough notch? That is more notch than I will ever, ever need. Matter of fact, I'm starting to have doubts that, uh, like, why even buy a notch? You could have just laid another frame rail on top and probably been good. 18s, by the way, 215, 35, 18s. I get asked that question a lot. So there is that much room. Matter of fact, let's grab a tape and we'll show you how much room there is. yeah yeah there's a lot got the axle centered i've got a strap keeping the pinion angle up and we're going to start doing some upper links and uh bag mounts day three working into the night gonna try and start working on getting the upper links in i think that's about where they're gonna go as always we're gonna uh, gonna do some bracing we're gonna tie them in we're gonna make some tabs first, which is what we're gonna do over here. Short tabs and it's the weekend, so we make stuff with old tools. Well, we're gonna try anyways. So, but that's the game plan. I'm gonna whip up some tubes or whip up some tabs, connect that cross member to those bed supports and see if we can get these upper links on before we call it a night, or at least get everything made to be in a good start for tomorrow morning. But uh, just getting her in here was, it was good, it was nice, it was fun. It was fun with one person. Oh, I see some movement. Have some help around the shop. Day four, day four, day three, I don't know. Here's where we're at, everybody. Decided to cut those tabs off and move these bars yet again to the outside, look at that. Huh? I just didn't like the way that it looked on the inside. I think this is a lot more stable. You can see we're starting to play with where we're putting our top bars. And uh, we got our cross members like kind of tacked in, you know, where we need to be. This is that great welder I talked about that was coming over on the weekend to bail me out from all those ugly welds you guys were seeing. See, if you don't know, wait until you got somebody that does. Let's start the rear bags right here. I've got them on and well, I think we're taking a step backwards. Matter of fact, I know we're taking a step backwards. You can see they're not all the way compressed. I've still got some room and that's robbing me of lift. Lift that I'm gonna need if we plan on body dropping this truck. now. These are the slam specialties, the SS, I think the sixes or whatever. So they have about 10 inches of lift overall. I think maybe they say 11, but let's call it 10. And with just the rear bags up, that lifts the truck or the frame at the lowest point up there where that cross member's at, only four inches off the ground. Which means with a three inch body drop, if I'm doing the math correctly, you're still only an inch off the ground. So that's not really gonna help us. I cannot stress to you guys enough the importance of just making tacks. Make sure they're strong and they hold, but just tack. That way you can cut it off and reset it two, three, five times until you get it right if you're like me and you don't know what you're doing. All right, let's do a little update. Bags are in. Bags are in. All right, so we added the cross member. You can see I dropped the plates an inch and a half and boy, what a difference it made. So they're not flush with the top and I don't know that it matters or cares, but what this allows me to do, you can see just how nice they're sitting now too. Just look at that. They're sitting great. Again, everything just tacked, but um, yeah, sitting fantastic. 
Dropping them that little bit has definitely helped in the lift department. And again, these are the SS6s. Uh, so they get about 10 inches of lift. We could still go up to the sevens or the eights. Not a problem, but these are the small bags. So you can see single port. Same thing we're running in the front. So might step these up to the next size bag by lowering it and getting a little bit of lift. We should be good to go. So good stuff. Oh, got a leaky bag. Leaky fitting right there. And since we got some cross members going in, right? We'll take that guy out. Start setting up room for our gas tank and our air management. This, in case you're wondering, is the same inch and a half, same whatever wall tubing as what the links are made out of. That's literally what I asked for. And uh, that's what I got. I still may add a second one across to there. But again, now that cross members are going in, time to start taking this guy out. So that's what we're up to now. What's that? Air it out, you say? Um, let's see if we can get this jack stand out. All right, and let's air it out. Oh yeah. Pretty nice, huh? Frames on the ground, bags still have a little bit of room. So uh, I think that's right. I mean, learning as we go, right folks? Keep on welding. All right, decided to roll the truck outside under its own air just to get a look at it. A lot of cleanup, a lot of finished welding, a lot of stuff to do. But I think, I think we are good to go. I think we've achieved the lift we want. I think this is gonna be it and we can start welding everything up solid, doing some reinforcements, some bracing, some gussets, figure out where the tanks go. That's right, I said tanks. Whoa, 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 whoa. Next episode, next episode.